I am waiting. I am listening. Speak to me. And then speak through me. Your words of life. Because I'm waiting. Because I'm listening. We praise God for the sweet spirit in this house. It is wonderful. And for your hearing has been read Proverbs 3, the first seven verses. And I would like to read, reread for you 5, 6, and 7. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. So if I were going to give you a thought to hang your hat on for this morning, it would simply be the compass for our way. Or the compass for my way, if you want to make it personal. The compass for my way. Father God, we come before you humbly, thanking you for your Holy Spirit. Thanking you, O oh God, that you don't just birth us and then leave us and send us out, but you order our steps. And if we have a hearing ear and a receptive heart, we will never be far from you, O oh God. So we ask now, Lord, that you hide us behind the cross so we're not seen. And even though it's my voice, speak through me, O oh God. As I listen to hear what you have to say, speak through me to those that belong to you. That we will lead with an understanding that you order the steps of those that belong to you. And that you will make our way successful. And we give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Compass for my way. Thank you so much. In the three verses that I read, and it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes, but fear, or revert, or revere the Lord, and depart from evil. There is a lot of instruction in the book of Proverbs, if you have ever read it. And it's instructions for how to have a successful life. And if we would do the first thing of the first verse in Proverbs 3, and it says, forget not, my son. We need to remember something. That we didn't go to Sunday school and vacation Bible school as children just to get out of our mother's hair, though sometimes it was to give them a break. But it was to lay a foundation of the word in us. That we need to remember as adults. Amen? Amen. That that is why we were sent. And so I looked up the word trust and direct and in, with, uh, and in all your ways. And this is what the uh, dictionary gave me. To trust is to confide in. So as to be secure without fear. To trust something or to have such confidence in something that you're not afraid that it will fail. Like I can lean on the podium and even take one foot off the floor because I, I have confidence that even though I'm a big girl, it can hold me up. So that's trust. We need to be able to trust in what? Our jobs? Because they change. Trust in our reputation? It depends on whoever's talking about you. But we need to learn to trust in the Lord. And then in the next verse it said he will direct thy paths. Direct is strengthen, or no, I'm sorry, straighten to guide or to give guidance. That if we ever trust him, he should be able to guide us down the path. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he made the path. And he knows it. He's already laid it out. Amen. Just I, I want y'all to help me preach this. Because he is the compass for our way. He's given us the word to help direct us in the right direction if we want to go. Amen. 
But this one was my favorite. In all thy ways, it was defined as begin, continue, and end every work, every purpose, and every plan with God. I'm going to say that one again because that one got me. Begin, continue, and end every work, every plan, every purpose with God. Some of us wouldn't get into so much trouble. Now, we start off okay. But if we could continue with God and then start with God, continue with God, and hang in there until he's finished, we would see success. We would experience success. But we get in and it's lonely. I ain't doing this no more. We get in and it's hard. I ain't feeling this. So we quit just before the breakthrough. We quit just before he's going to open the door. Just before our faithfulness is proved. So we need to, this, this one we need to really hold on to. Amen. So if I were good, our bishop gives us a premise for his sermons. That means the sermon in one or two sentences. So if I were going to give you a premise, it would be going through this life, our confidence cannot be in ourselves or in flesh. Because God knows the way, he knows what's ahead, and he is the only one able to give guidance in every situation and circumstance because he made the way. So if you don't take anything else from the sermon, you got the sermon. Amen. Amen. The instructions in Proverbs 3 I thought were very pertinent to now. Still at the, 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 the beginning of this new conference year with the whole year ahead of us and planning and all the stuff we're going to do. We have to begin, continue, and end with God. Amen. Amen. But the first instruction in Proverbs 3 in verse 1, it says... Remember, or don't forget, some of us, we forgot that we weren't always saved. Some of us forget that we weren't as mature in the spirit as we are now. We weren't born this way, amen? amen. Hardships made us this way. Yes. Let me help you. But we need to remember or not ever forget the instructions because that is what is going to lead and that's what's going to guide us. As developing believers, we should always be in remembrance of the word that we have been taught and that we have learned. We can't forget the word because the word of God leads to wisdom and wisdom leads us to righteousness. Let me say that again. We can't forget the word because the word leads us to wisdom. Having an understanding of what to do with what we know. And then the having an understanding of to do with what we know leads us to godliness. The word leads to wisdom and wisdom leads us to godliness. As a son or a daughter of God, we should always be in remembrance of the instructions of our Father. When we do not know what to do and where to go and which, when which turn to make, we have a compass for our way. And that is the wisdom shown throughout the Word of God, but especially in the book of Proverbs, which is called the book of wisdom. So we should always remember the wisdom. But let's look at verse 3, which is not in the part of the scripture we are dealing with. But it says, let love, the love of God, and the faithfulness to instruction never leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. So that wisdom should be where? In the notes of the margins of your Bible? Your journal on the nightstand? It should be so close to you that it's in you. So the wisdom should never... You should not make an unwise decision or an unwise choice because wisdom is so close to you. Yes. And it's in you. And if you don't have it, it's available to you. Amen. Amen. We should, they should never, nobody should ever say, oh, that wasn't smart. 
or that was done or what was what were they thinking when they did that because wisdom should be in you it says in verse 3 let the love of God and the faithfulness to instruction never leave you whether you're in a moment of passion whether you are in a moment of emotion, a moment of anger, wisdom is what dictates to us. Amen? Should be. Not always. But it should be. It is a wise thing to remember the teachings of the Bible. Because the wisdom is that which directs us and allows us to find favor with God and man. How do I know? Because it says that in verse 4, So thou shalt find favor, good understanding in the sight of God and man. That When you walk in wisdom, people kind of look up to you. When, you. when you act wise, people are drawn to you. That when you're not foolish in your decision making, people see that. And it gives you favor with God and favor with men because that's just the promise of the word. I didn't say that. The word of God did. So, so it, it may cost you to act wise instead of otherwise. Y'all know what the otherwise is, right? So it may cost you a little bit to act wise. But the benefit or the consequences of that is favor with God and man. Let's go to the uh, the portion of scripture that I have chosen for this message. And that is verse 5, 6, and 7. Verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That we have to have such a confidence as we remember the teachings of the word, as we keep working and walking in love and faithfulness, we can make wise choices. We need to trust in the Lord. That means be sincere. Be secure without fear. With all your heart. Oh. With all your heart. Some of us are half-hearted about our salvation. That means when it's comfortable, when it's on my agenda, it's fine. Some of us are half-hearted about our, um, our service to God. Some are even half-hearted about our dedication to the work that he's called us to. How do I know? Because you're not about it all the time. You talk about it, but you don't be about it. I didn't get no amen, but it's amen anyhow, Walls. Thank you, lights. We can't be half-hearted when we trust God. Let's wake up and hear this. Wisdom instructs us to be wise. Having confidence in the Lord with all our heart. Wholehearted confidence. What, it would, what, what would it be like if we were wholehearted in our dedication? Wholehearted in our worship? Wholehearted in our work for God? Can you imagine the successes that we would experience? Wholehearted about just belonging to him. What? In my mind is awesome because I don't see it. Wholehearted about just belonging to God. Just about worship. If we could be wholehearted in our worship, wholehearted in our work, what a difference it would make in the lives that we live. Yes. We, must be, we must come to the place of understanding that God is able to do what he wills. That means whatever he desires. That he's wise enough to do what's best for us. And he's good enough to keep his promise. That he is able and has the authority to do what he will. But he is also wise enough to do what's best for us. But he's also good enough as a God. That he keeps his promise to us. 
Who wouldn't wholeheartedly trust a God like that? We, we have a compass. We don't have to sit at the crossroads and say, well, which way should I turn? He said, I've already laid out the path before you. Just do it. If we could ever get to the part where we lean not on, on our own understanding. Trust wouldn't be hard if we didn't lean on our own understanding. <laughs> to acknowledge him in all our ways wouldn't be such a, 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 a give and take thing if we didn't have to lean on what we understand and what we know and how we've always done it. But lean not unto thy own understanding. Why? Because every time I figure it out, every time I do what I think, it never works out. It's not successful. It is not to my good. I have always failed me. Why? Because it's me. I'm flawed. I'm broken. And so when I depend on this flawed, broken understanding, how can I expect perfection and success? But if I begin with God and continue with God and end with God, every plan, every purpose, every work, the word says he promised us success. I believe it. We can pass the test. Right, Anna? We can pass the test. Why? Because he gave us all the answers, Ramona. He, he's already given us the answer. Yeah. We cannot depend on us. That is the problem with the church. I don't know where we've gotten to this point where I got this. It's God's church. Right. What do you have? Right. You, you ever hear anybody in church say, I got this. Don't. I, I, I can handle that. No, you can't. And if you could, you wouldn't need a Savior. If you could, you wouldn't need Jesus. If you could, God would have nothing to do. Wow. We don't have it, and we need to get that understanding. If we acknowledge him in everything, every plan, every choice, every purpose, every work, he promised us success. There is a scripture in Proverbs 16. And it says, commit thy works unto the Lord and our plans will succeed. As we live in faith to the covenant that we have with God. It just simply means that if you let God be God, he will let you be successful. Isn't that easy? Isn't that a good thing? Where do we go wrong? We got that. We better let it go. In Jesus' name. Oh, I'm not going to take the medicine like, like the doctor prescribed. I'm, I'm going to do this. Oh, well, you know, the boss wanted it this way, but I think this is a better way. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Amen. Because we got it. We're the, we're the generation of I can handle this. Apparently not. Since success is not trailing us and overtaking us and coming up on us. Amen. Amen. Anyway, let me get off of that. We have to learn that it's not in us. We have to learn to lean on him, depend on him. Because he's already mapped out our way. The steps of a good man are what? Order of the Lord. He has already said, Saran, at birth, you're going to be this, and you're going to sing, and you're going to work with children. He's already mapped it out for you. That's why you work with children. That's why you sing in the choir. Because he's already gone ahead of you. When you were born, he saw the end of your days. Because he already planned it. Now, do we have to do that? No. But when we leave his road, we go on to rough terrain. It's called wilderness. Ain't no water, ain't no hotel, no motel, or holiday inn in the wilderness. <laughs> your rock will become your pillow. You see what I'm saying? When we go off the path, 
we make it hard for ourselves and we just wonder, oh, why can't I, why can't I do this? Why can't I have success like brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so? Because you don't want to follow the road. Yeah. If I took my little Nissan Altima off the highway and started going over sidewalks and through people's lawns and all of that stuff, I would tear up the undercarriage, the tires, the transmission or whatever. There is a road called Bancroft. There is a road called Oakwood. And if I was going through fences and stuff to get here, first of all, <laughs> someone would call the police, amen, and take the little driver's license that the, that the Department of Motor Vehicles gave me. So why can't we go on the path that God has prescribed? Because he's already laid it out. He's already told you. You know, there might be some, some, some water on the road, but don't worry, you're not going to drown. Oh, there might be a brush fire, but don't you worry because then you're not even going to have the smell of smoke on you. The enemies are going to come and they may even shoot a bow and arrow, but guess what? I got you. He's already laid out the path. Why can't we get it through our Noggin. Yes. Because Solomon, in all of his wisdom, wrote this down for his son. And his son was as hard-headed as ours. And he kept saying, don't forget the teachings of your father. Remember, remember, remember. And he said, later, I ain't feeling this. But we have to come to the place. Where we remember the teachings of the word. Where we remember what the word of God said. And say, okay, I'm not going to be half-hearted about my relationship with you anymore. Because if I was half-hearted with Brother Bill, he wouldn't stay long. He has to have all of my heart, all of my mind. That as much as he's concerned about me, I have to be concerned about him. And not only do it, but, but make him aware of it. Amen? Amen. That's wholehearted kind of relationship. We can't be half-hearted with God. Amen. Because it, it, it makes us too self-sufficient. It makes us too much in ourselves and not enough about God. Amen. So in all thy ways, acknowledge him. If we begin with God. And end with, I mean, continue with God and end with God. And I already said how extraordinary the successes that we would experience if we just had that simple plan. Begin with God, continue with God, and end with God. When we have confidence, trust, when we're sure God of God and don't depend on what we know and how we understand it, we can rest in the fact that God, he has it under control. Yes, that if he made the road and he know what's in the road, he can tell me. But we have to have, to have an earring here and a receptive heart. Amen. Amen. But this can only apply to those who live in the faith covenant with him. God is not going to allow you to, to plan the, the murder of your next door neighbor because they leave bikes on your sidewalk. Have you begin to plan it and continue with him and carry it out and he's going to make you successful without any kind of um, consequence. God, no, you have to live in the faith covenant with him. So he's not going to help you plan to steal or plan to kill. But if you want to live right, he will help you do that. If you want to learn to give right, he can help you do that. When you start with God and continue with God and just go on to see what God, what kind of end God's going to bring you to. But we have to be in covenant. We have to belong to him. We can't ask him to do crazy stuff like I want to blow up the plant, but I don't want him to know it's me. Because, you know, my boss aggravated me and cut my hours. I mean, we can't be crazy. Amen. Amen. But we have to depend on wisdom, which leads to righteousness. Righteousness. 
rightness as as it as is understood with God, right standing with God. So wisdom leads us to right standing with God. Who wouldn't want to operate in wisdom? And the only way we can find wisdom is where? In the word of God. He's left us wisdom, nuggets, and gold that all we have to do, we don't even have to mine it. It's, it's there. Remember. Because it keeps the commandment. It gives you length of your days and, and long life. It gives you peace. Don't let mercy and truth get out of your sight. Bind them about just little bits of nuggets. Hold on to what is good. Going on to verse 7, it says, Okay, right chapter. Be not wise in your own eyes. Be not wise in your own eyes, but revere the Lord, depart from evil, and do good. The greatest enemy to our ultimate submission and our reliance on God is the acceptance of our own wisdom. When we are wise in our own eyes, we become fools in the eyes of the world. I know. I've been there. I've done that. Oh, you don't have to tell me. Anybody know anybody like that? If it's you, just say amen. <laughs> You cannot be wise in your own eyes. Why? If you think that what little knowledge you have of the word, of the world, of the cosmos, is all the wisdom you need, you're never going to be willing to learn anything else. We can't see that this is all there is, what this little mind can contain. You, that's right. You have to be teachable. And when you know that you can become teachable, then you will search out the wisdom of the word. Because if you're wise, oh, well, I've been through high school and I finished college and I have my master's. I'm working on a doctorate in the philosophy or whatever. I got this. That's, that's where the I got this come from. Right, and even with a doctorate, you don't know it all because th some doctor taught you. So we can't be wise in our own eyes because then we become fools in the eyes of the world. We walk around with our chest out and our head up and our nose in the air praying not for it to rain because some of us would drown. <laughs> Y'all will get that on your way home. But we can't be wise in our own eyes because then we lose the respect for the wisdom that God has given us. We lose it, the awe that God inspires in us or supposed to. When we reverence God, we honor God, we worship, and we will depart from evil because anything, when, when you get that close to God, anything that's not God, you're not going to want to be bothered with And remember, he's already paved the way and laid the way and he's given you road signs. Evil is not on the path that God has dictated for us. It's not it's, it's when you go over the lawns and through people's yards and fences. That's when the evil comes in because you've gotten off the prescribed path. Come on. I've gotten off a few paths. And ended up in some yards I should never have been in. With some consequences I didn't want to pay for. Reseeding lawns and putting back fences. That's, the, that's just the example. I really didn't run over nobody's stuff. Yet. <laughs> but we have to get back to where God is God. Get back to the point where whatever God says is right. And it's for me. Yeah. Amen. 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 The compass for the way we should live is laid out in the word of God. 
And it can be simply stated, begin with God. Continue with God. And end with God. I'm telling you, if you do those three things, then he promised us success. He promised us for us to get to the destination that we were headed to without a traffic ticket, without running over somebody, something, and having to pay for it. He said, if you begin with me, continue with me, and end with me, your, your way will be successful. How many of you want success in life? Whatever life there's left. Then today you have to make up your mind that wholeheartedly, not half-hearted, wholeheartedly you will trust in the Lord so that you're secure without any fear. He got me. You have to, um, you have to allow him to guide your path. He will direct your path. And then you have, you can't be wise in your own eyes. Because when you begin with God, he will show you compared to, to holiness. When you continue with God, you will continue to see. Either you're getting closer or you're getting farther away from this, this thing. And then when you end in God, end with God, then hopefully you'll be in the glory of the revelation heaven that we have been studying about. Because that's the only way God will have it, is that you are with him. He said, I'm going to prepare that place, so don't you want to end with him? The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. I've already laid out the path. If you just follow, I'll give you success. Some of us need to experience success. Even if it's just living right for one day. Living right for a week. Being honest with yourself. You are not a size 12. Don't you put that on. <laughs> Hello. No, you're not 29 again this year. He is the compass for our way. He will order our steps on it and then guide us through the streets. He's left road signs everywhere. Saran, turn here. No, don't turn here. Go straight to the next block. I mean, if we want it that, that kind of direct, that kind of short, well, Lord, just give me to the next block. Give me to the next turn. Give me to the next intersection. And he will guide you. If you begin, the important one, continue and end with God. He is the compass for our way. God bless you.